Hillary Diane Rodham was born on October 26, 1947. She would grow up to be one of the most powerful women in the history of America. But how did her rise to power begin? What qualities set her apart from others that would lead her down the path to power? Born in Chicago, Illinois, raised by Dorothy and Hugh Rodham along with two younger brothers, Hillary was a natural competitor and always strolled towards excellence. She was an honor student who also participated in sports such as baseball as well as student government. In 1965, Hillary would graduate Maine South High School in the top 5% of her class. In that same year, Hillary would attend Wellesley College where she would pursue a BA in political science. Having grown up in a staunchly conservative household, Hillary would serve as the president of the campus Young Republicans her freshman year. She would later step down from this position as her views would change regarding the Vietnam War and the Civil Rights Movement. In 1969, she would graduate Wellesley with honors and became the first student in the college's history to deliver its commencement speech. The speech received a standing ovation that lasted over seven minutes long. Next, Hillary would enter Yale Law School. She would serve on the editorial board of the Yale Review of Law and Social Action and spend her time working on research that focused on children. Despite her heavy workload, Hillary would find time for her personal life as well. In 1971, she began dating fellow Yale Law student Bill Clinton. Over the next couple of years, Bill would continuously ask Hillary to marry him. Skeptical about marriage, fearing that her independence would be compromised, she would decline Bill's proposal time and time again. In 1973, Hillary would receive her Juris Doctor degree from Yale, and in that same year, she would undertake a year of postgraduate study on children in medicine at the Yale Child Study Center. In 1974, Hillary became an advisor to the House Committee on the Judiciary in Washington, D.C., helping to research procedures of impeachment during the Watergate scandal of the Nixon administration. The committee's research will ultimately lead to the resignation of President Nixon in 1974. I shall resign the presidency effective at noon tomorrow. Around this time, Hillary was being seen as someone with a potentially bright political future, and Democratic Party leaders in Washington began to take notice. But when Hillary failed to pass the bar exam in D.C., she would follow Bill to Arkansas where he taught law, ran an unsuccessful campaign for Congress, and would eventually become state attorney general. In Arkansas, Hillary would successfully pass the bar exam and became one of only two female faculty at the School of Law at the University of Arkansas Fayetteville. Around the same time, she finally agreed to marry Bill Clinton. On October 11, 1975, Hillary and Bill wed in the living room of their home in Fayetteville. Hillary insisted on keeping her maiden name, Rodham, in order to keep her personal and professional life separate. In 1976, Hillary was the campaign director of field operations for Jimmy Carter's presidential campaign in Indiana. After the successful campaign, President Carter would appoint Hillary to the board of the Legal Services Committee, where she would serve as the board's first female chair from 1978 to 1980. In 1978, Hillary would become the first lady of Arkansas after her husband's successful bid for the state's governorship. In 1979, Hillary became full partner at Rose Law Firm in Arkansas, the first woman to do so. In February of 1980, Hillary and Bill would give birth to their daughter. Her name was Chelsea. That same year, Bill Clinton lost his bid for re-election as governor. Two years later in 1982, Hillary would return to the governor's mansion as First Lady of Arkansas after her husband would successfully campaign for the governorship once more. During this time, Hillary began going by her married name to appeal to the traditional values of Arkansas voters. During her stint as First Lady of Arkansas from 1982 to 1992, Hillary would continue to make important contributions in both the public and private sectors. In 1988, and in 1991, the National Law Journal named her as one of the 100 most influential lawyers in America. In 1992, Bill Clinton would successfully run for the presidency, making Hillary First Lady of the United States. 
Amid numerous tabloid scandals and the media probing into the Clintons' personal lives, Hillary would be extraordinarily influential in her husband being elected. Hillary was the very first first lady to hold a postgraduate degree and she would become known as the most powerful wife of a president since Eleanor Roosevelt. During her husband's first term, Hillary would take on an explicitly activist role as first lady, the likes of which had never been seen before. She became the only first lady in history to have an office in the West Wing and to be heavily involved in cabinet appointments. One of her most ambitious undertakings was pushing for health care reform. Hillary was appointed by President Clinton to lead the Task Force on National Health Care Reform. Her task was to sell the Clinton administration's health care plan to the American people. People need a health care system that controls costs and provides security to families. Now is our chance to beat the historical odds and give the American people the health security they need. Facing harsh opposition from conservatives in the health insurance industry, who would devise a strong media campaign to sway public opinion against it, the plan would eventually fail. This did not stop Hillary's ambition. Throughout the duration of her years as first lady, she would continue to focus on issues revolving around children, veterans, and women's rights internationally. As First Lady, she traveled to 79 countries, becoming the most traveled First Lady in United States history. After serving eight years as First Lady, she would run for an open United States Senate seat in New York in the year 2000, becoming the first First Lady to seek elected office. Wow, this is amazing. Thank you all. Hillary would win the seat handily and was sworn in as a senator from New York in January 2001. In the Senate, Hillary would sit on five committees, including the Committee on Budget and the Committee on Armed Services. She would build strong relationships with both Democrats and Republicans and would keep a low profile, deciding instead to focus primarily on her work as senator. In 2006, she would win a second term as senator by an astonishing margin. It seemed obvious what the next step for Hillary Rodham Clinton would be. I announced today that I'm forming a presidential exploratory committee. You know, after six years of George Bush, it is time to renew the promise of America. In 2008, she would embark on a historic campaign for the presidency of the United States. Initially the front runner and party favorite for the Democratic nomination, Hillary would face a tough challenge by a first term senator from Illinois, Barack Obama. She would get closer than any woman in U.S. history to winning the nomination for president by a major political party, but would ultimately lose the race to Senator Obama. She would go on to campaign for Obama, helping to secure his election as president in November of 2008. Change has come to America. Following the election, Hillary and the president-elect would discuss what her role in his administration should be. On December 1st, 2008, he would nominate Hillary as his Secretary of State. Mr. President-elect, thank you for this honor. If confirmed, I will give this assignment, your administration, and our country my all. On January 21st, 2009, Hillary was confirmed by the Senate and took the oath of office as Secretary of State, resigning from her seat as Senator from New York. As Secretary of State, Hillary would be instrumental in bringing the wars in Afghanistan and Iraq to an end. She was the first senior American official to publicly acknowledge the internet as an important part of American foreign policy. The internet is a network that magnifies the power and potential of all others. And that's why we believe it's critical that its users are assured certain basic freedoms. She advocated for gay rights abroad, and she saw women's rights and human rights as critical to national security. She would also expand the State Department's use of social media, such as Facebook and Twitter, in order to spread information and empower citizens around the world with a democratic platform to engage their leaders. During her tenure, Hillary became the most traveled Secretary of State in history, visiting a record-breaking 112 countries. After nearly four decades in public life, Hillary decided that it was time to take a break. In 2013, despite the re-election of President Obama and her overwhelming popularity, she would step down from her post as Secretary of State to return to private life and focus on writing. 
Just uh, standing here looking out at all of you, the people I have been honored to serve and lead and work with over the last four years is uh, an incredible experience. Hillary is widely regarded as the potential successor to President Obama and is already seen as a frontrunner in the 2016 presidential elections. She has said that she has no intentions to run as of now, but does not rule out the possibility to seek the presidency one more time. Hillary went from humble middle class beginnings to the highest heights of achievement, breaking glass ceilings all along the way. She did so not by taking shortcuts or asking for sympathy or living off of her famous name or affiliation, but by her incredible work ethic, intelligence, grace, and passion and commitment to serve a purpose higher than herself. Whether or not she ever holds public office again, what Hillary has given the world through her incredible journey and inspiring story will forever be her real power.